discussion. Is there objection? Mr. President. Senator from Missouri. Mr. President, reserving the right to object, I appreciate the earnestness on this issue from my friend and colleague, the Senator from New Jersey. He mentions about something could happen in the world, something will happen in the world, something I submit to you has happened in the world, and today we've been learning about it. I'm talking about the crisis in Afghanistan, the debacle in Afghanistan. All day the Senate has been hearing testimony in the Armed Services Committee from Secretary Austin, from General Milley, from General McKenzie, about how it came to be that 13 American service members are dead, 169 civilians killed, hundreds of Americans left behind enemy lines there as we still speak, the greatest foreign policy crisis that this country has seen since Vietnam. And those aren't my words. Those are the words, the comparison of the members, the Democrat members of the committee who repeatedly referenced today Vietnam, the fall of Saigon. That's the level of crisis that we're dealing with. And what accountability has there been for this crisis, Mr. President, for this debacle? Because crisis isn't even quite the right word. That sounds like it's a natural disaster, like it just accidentally happened. That's not the case. No, this is a debacle. This is a failure of leadership of the first order. And what accountability has there been for it? Who has resigned? Who has been fired? Who has been relieved of command? Nobody. What actions has the administration taken? None. What did Secretary Austin say today? He said, well, we'll take a hard look at ourselves and we'll ask some tough questions. Well, Mr. President, that is not nearly good enough. Americans are dead. Americans are stranded behind enemy lines. Our foreign policy is in a state of collapse. Our national security is in a state of collapse. Enemies around the world are watching what's happened in Afghanistan and are seeing an opportunity as the United States shows weakness and disarray and chaos. There must be accountability. Let me say something more about what we learned today, because we did learn quite a lot, and all of it is frightening. We learned that the President of the United States lied. He lied when he said to the American people in an interview on television just a few weeks ago that he was never told by any of his military advisors, never told that a drawdown on this timetable, his timetable, would result in catastrophe. He was asked by George Stephanopoulos, and now I'm quoting, but your top military advisors warned against withdrawing on this timetable. They wanted you to keep about 2,500 troops. President Biden. No, they didn't. Stephanopoulos, they didn't tell you that they wanted troops to stay? President Biden, no. Stephanopoulos, so no one told you. Your military advisors did not tell you, no, we should just keep 2,500 troops? President Biden, no. No one said that to me that I can recall. Today we heard from General Milley, and General McKenzie and Secretary Austin, who each of them said that they advised the president, it was their considered military judgment that the president's plans were mistaken. They advised against it. They advised him against it. And yet he said, no, no one ever told me. I'm not responsible. No one ever told me. We also learned this. We learned that the president lied when he said that he had no idea that the Taliban would take over the country in such a short time period. From the same interview, George Stephanopoulos said, back in July, this is to President Biden, back in July, you said a Taliban takeover was highly unlikely. Was the intelligence wrong or did you downplay it? Biden said, no, I think that there was no consensus. If you go back and look, they said that basically this is not gonna happen. Stephanopoulos, you didn't put a timeline on it when you said it was highly unlikely. You just flat out said it's highly unlikely the Taliban would take over. Biden says, yeah. But we learned today that, in fact, his commander on the ground, General Miller, warned as early as March, March of this year, that the military situation in Afghanistan was deteriorating rapidly, that the Taliban was on the offensive, that the drawdown of American troops would likely result in the collapse of the Afghan government and the Afghan security forces sooner rather than later. It was going to come fast, is what General Miller said. And yet, the president says, no one ever told him that. He never knew about it. 
In fact, his own commanders on the ground warned him about it. And what was the consequence of this? Well, the president is either forgetting or ignoring or just outright lying about what he was advised by his own commanders. His administration was failing to plan for the collapse of the Afghan security forces. We learned that today, too. Secretary Austin said, we just didn't plan for a scenario of Afghan security forces collapse. We didn't plan for it. Why didn't they plan for it? I mean, why isn't somebody being held accountable for it? The Special Inspector General for Afghanistan has been warning for years that the Afghan security forces were not ready, that they were not well equipped, that they were not well trained, that they would not likely stand on their own. We know that the commander on the ground shared the same assessment, and yet the administration did not plan for the collapse, by their own admission, did not plan for the collapse of the Afghan security forces or the collapse of the Afghan government which also meant that they did not order the evacuation of American civilians in time. They dillied, they, da they dilly dallied, they waited, they dithered. They did not order the evacuation in time. They waited until the middle of August to undertake an evacuation of civilians in earnest after American troops had withdrawn from the country. No wonder there was chaos in Kabul. No wonder that there was a, it was a, a total disaster that's the administration's fault. They waited because they hadn't planned. They waited because apparently they were fighting among themselves, the State Department, the Defense Department, and the White House, all fighting because President Biden wasn't leading. It's a total debacle. It's total chaos. Now, my friend, the senator from New Jersey, quite reasonably wants to know, what's the, what's the connection? Why am I objecting to these nominees? Why do I want to vote? Here's the connection. It's about accountability. No one has been held accountable. I know the senator wants to hear from Secretary Austin and his committee. He should hear from the secretary and his committee, because what we learned today contradicts quite a lot of the testimony that the Secretary of State gave to the senator from New Jersey in his committee earlier. Quite a lot of contradictions. So he's quite right to want to hear from Secretary Austin. But we need to do more from here, to, more than hear from him. We need to have accountability for what has happened. So until we get that accountability, until someone is held responsible, until there is some turn, some change, some shift in policy, and I've called for the resignations of General Milley, Secretary Austin, Secretary Blinken, and the National Security Advisor, all of whom planned and executed this operation, until there is accountability, I think the least the Senate can do is actually vote, take at least a vote on this floor for nominees to leadership positions in the State Department and the Department of Defense. So, Mr. President, I object. Objection is heard. Uh, Mr. President. Senator from New Jersey. I have